And so this is the symmetric key encryption lab. So we'll do a little bit of OpenSSL and then we'll have a look at uh, some AES padding with uh, Python. Okay, so OpenSSL is, is a useful package for us and that allows us to be able to check our encryption. Let's get logged in. Okay, so open SSL and then we can list the cipher commands here. And there we go. So this is the commands that we can actually use in there. And we'll look at the version that we have on the system. And we can see it's 101E. We can check if a number is prime yeah, with a hex value. Okay, so you can see that those values aren't actually prime numbers. The next one, what we'll do is that uh, we'll create a file. Save it. Let's check that it's there. And then now what we'll do is we'll, we'll use uh, AES 256 CBC to be able to encrypt our file. Just grab the commands from here. Okay, we'll just check that we've got the right thing. So we're going to encrypt using 256 CBC, a cipher block chaining our input file, and then that's our output file. We're going to add a password onto this to be able to generate the key. Let's call it Napier. And that's it there. Okay, so that's encrypted our file. And then we'll just have a look at that file. That's what it looks like. So it's in a binary format uh, just now. So obviously we couldn't uh, distribute that easily. So what we normally do is we add on a minus base 64 option at the end. And now when we miss the file, we get nice B64 format. And then we'll try it again. Same password, this generates the key. And now what we'll do is we'll have a look and we see that it's changed. The reason it's changed is because CBC uses salt. So uh, we're salting the output. What you'll notice is the first few characters here aren't actually 
uh, don't actually change. That's because those are formatting areas that describes the encryption that we have. But we can see after here, this is the bits that describe the salt and also the cipher. So now what we'll do is we'll decrypt the file. So we'll just grab it from here. is a description okay so we're going to decrypt we'll take the input of encrypted dot bin a password of Napier command back again so we'll just check that we have our base64 that's correct and now we'll decrypt with the minus D option and that works perfectly okay so that's how we can encrypt and decrypt with inside uh, OpenSSL so we can do the same with uh, with other ciphers so in this part, what we'll do is we'll download this code here. And we'll have a look at uh, how we can uh, pad the data. Because we're using a block cipher, we end up with uh, padding characters in the last block. Okay, so we'll just go to this link here. So in this case we're using AES encryption. And we'll just try that. Python library. Okay, so I've got padding and I've got the crypto 
uh, py crypto is the install that we need. So we'll run our code again, and then it's there. Okay, so that works fine. And what we should see is that uh, because uh, we're using hello, it's one, two, three, four, five. <coughs> we end up with 11 characters short of the 16 that we would need. So 11 is 0B. So we can see in CMS, we pad with 0B uh, and then we'll encrypt. And then when we decrypt, after we decrypt, we'll, we'll take away the 0B and end up with the the plain text again. Okay, so you can have a look at uh, different different words if we try with fox. This time there's only three letters in it. Okay, so we end up with a zero D. So that's, and uh, we have A is 10, a B is 11, C is 12, D is 13. So we have 13 characters there because we only have three characters in the input data. Okay, so we can do the same for DES. So we'll just try and find the DES code. So this time DES has <coughs> half the size of the of the block so that the padding will be uh, less. So we'll try So you can see the, the padding uh, appears here. So because we're only using three characters, uh, there's a 64 bit block size, which is eight characters per block. So that's why we see 05 there uh, for the padding. Okay, I'm starting. Okay, so let's look at uh, this example. So what we'll do is that we'll, we'll, we'll take this code here and then we'll add in some arguments to be able to take the message and the key. So I'll just copy and paste the code from here. So just paste that in there and just make sure it's working okay. Okay, that works fine. So what we'll do is we'll add in the arguments. To these ones here. So that will allow us to, to put the arguments of the message and the key 
into the arguments of the program. That out. P1, and we have a message of hello and a key of hello123. So that checks out this cipher, this <coughs> cipher here. So that works fine. Okay, so we can go ahead and we can do the other ones. Inkwell and orange. <coughs> and so on. Okay, so we can easily modify it for uh, other things, other uh, encryption methods. So now what we'll do is that we'll now decrypt. So we have some cipher and we have a key. We now need to get the plain text back. So you can come up with your own solution, but this is the one that I've derived. And it's basically taking the cipher in and then converting it from a hex value back into our, our byte stream. Okay, so here it's here. Now we'll take the cipher in then we'll convert it back from a hex value, we unhexify it back into our byte array and then we should be able to decrypt that from there. So then we'll run p2 and we'll take our cipher hex value and our key is hello. And hopefully it will decrypt OK. So we can take each one and run it. This time we have a key of ankle. Here comes up a spin. So if we get the wrong key, then it comes up with uh, some form of exception. Okay, so try it with a base 64 and see if you can decrypt these ones. The next thing that we can do is that we can try to catch the exception when it gives us an error. So from that, we'll put a try catch and the plain text. So if the key doesn't work, then it will show us an error message. Okay, so just look at this, it shows the error there. Okay, so have a try to see how you get on with the rest of the tutorial and that's showing a basic introduction to it.